today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Hero Cross Hybrid Figuration 005, the Star Wars Stormtrooper. Another super detailed, super deformed die cast piece coming to us from the folks over at Hero Cross. Uh, obviously, one thing that you'll see with the box itself is that it is a stark white box with the print of the classic Stormtrooper face on the front or helmet on the front there. And then the top section of the box is black. Spin around the other side, you've got Star Wars, the, the logo font. And then on the sides, hybrid metal figuration number 005 Stormtrooper. On the bottom of the box, there is some warnings and Hero Cross as well. www.herocross.com is your destination if you guys want to check out some fantastic die cast pieces. This is now the second one. Spots already had a look at the hybrid prime. You can also go to facebook.com forward slash hero cross HK. Uh, it is recommended for ages 15 and up and it does contain some choking hazards as it obviously would be a smaller, has smaller pieces. These are also high end collectible so you really don't want to be necessarily giving these to a child. This text section here slides up and inside, let's put that to the side, inside you've got the Stormtrooper, his blaster, a couple of interchangeable hands and he also comes with a display stand. And then finally on the back we've got the Empire logo. Spot's going to take a uh, break and I'm going to fully get this out of packaging. When we come back though we're going to have a better look at the Star Wars hybrid figure, metal figuration number 005, the Star Wars Stormtrooper. There's more Henuei guys, don't go anywhere, stay tuned. With the Hero Cross Stormtrooper, you get yourself a standard black display stand, a little peg hole on the top there, and it comes with an adjustable neck that pegs into place. The neck itself has a couple of pivot points. There's a main pivot point down at the base, one in the midsection, one at the top, and then this part this part here swivels with uh, open and close waist clip. Uh, it gives you a lot, enough flexibility with posing options that you could technically have the Stormtrooper lunging or flying in air. Not that you would necessarily do that, but you can certainly do that if you so wish. Uh, these little peg points on the sides Funny enough, you can take the hands, the interchangeable hands that come included with the Stormtrooper, and you can peg them into the top. This is a fantastic touch because a lot of times when you have a figure and you don't make use of the interchangeable hands, there's no real section that you can keep them. You can keep them in the box, yes, but if you ever want to feel like you want to change them out to something, you have full access to the interchangeable hands. That is a nice touch, and I really like that they would have gone and included that. It goes for his other accessories. The Stormtrooper again comes with his trusty blaster. I would wonder why the Stormtroopers even ever use them because it doesn't seem like they ever shoot anything. But needless to say, he does come with a single blaster. Putting that to the side, let's have a look at the Stormtrooper. What a certainly a sight to see. Uh, super stylized, it's a super deformed Stormtrooper. So essentially, he's got a bigger head, he's got a smaller body. But the, th the things that you like so much about the Stormtrooper are present here, just in smaller form. Uh, it looks as if the, the body itself uh, is a main black body, and I'm not sure if it's the same bodies that they use for their other pieces, and then they simply just add components to it. But even if it's not the case, uh, all the armor pieces, much like the real Stormtrooper in the movies, are all independent pieces. They're all pieces that have been attached to the under armor, which would have been exactly the way it would have been presented in the movie as well. The Stormtroopers, in, in essence, are all plated soldiers. They have the armor, and then they have the armor plates going over top. Again, why Stormtroopers even have plates when you've got Ewoks defeating them with stones, I don't really know. Uh, he's super articulated, though. As to be said with the Prime that we've already had a look at, the Stormtrooper is very, very articulated. I uh, love his head. I love the head on the Stormtrooper. Uh, it's a little more slender. It's a little more squat because it goes perfectly with the overall design motif of the piece. Coloring is very nice. Nice vibrant white. Little accents there of gray and some accents in the front there of gray. And he's got his little breathing uh, tubes, breathing sections of his mask. And of course, the stark black eyes, a common trait with all Stormtroopers. Um, 
he is uh, he's a good he's a good solid piece. It doesn't have the weight that Prime has. Prime, by comparison, when we had a look at the Optimus Prime, had a lot more weight to it. The Stormtrooper here is a little lighter in in. Uh, lighter in piece, but he does still have a weight to him. He does have a noticeable weight that as soon as you do pick him up, you do feel like there's a quality to it. It doesn't feel like a light piece at all. He does have interchangeable hands that we, of course, have already discussed. Funny enough, he, out of packaging, had uh, did not have closed fists. T tends to be the default for a lot of figures. They tend to come out of packaging with closed fists, but he does have a pair of closed fists. He has a couple of reaching hands, different posed hands, kind of like don't shoot me, don't shoot me hands. Uh, but the hand in hand, hand in hand, the hand in hand is already suited to hold his blaster complete with the finger right on the trigger, which is a nice touch. Again, like would you, depending on how you display your stormtrooper, I mean you could theoretically, you could theoretically bend his arms. They don't quite touch one another, but you can have the stormtrooper Kind of standing guard, a fantastic piece too. Also accompanying the uh, the Darth Vader as well. You might want to be inclined to get a couple of these little bad boys if you want to have them posed with Vader. Uh, when it comes to his articulation, we've kind of touched base on it briefly, but let's have a look at the articulation. By the way, as you can see, all the pieces how they slide off. Just peg the hand into place. When it comes to his articulation, he does have a lot for how small of a piece he is. Nice ball joint in the head, and it looks like there might be, the way it's socketed, it looks like it's a ball joint that sits in the, the top socket. The socket in the head swivels, but then it, there, it sits itself into a ball joint, so it kind of get a movement up and down, and then it swivels right, left and right. Arms hinge outward, and the nice touch is that because the shoulder plates because they are hinged independently when you move the arms out it doesn't limit the movement of the arms you can still move the arms forward and back and it's not restricted at all by these top shoulder pads a nice design feature swivel in the wrists or swivel in the forearms i should say and hinge in the elbows now the thing with the elbows is is that when you swivel them you have to find where the joint is on the elbow and the reason why i say that is the hinge is right there. So you, when you swivel it, you want to make sure that you move the, the forearm guard out of the way so that you can get a full bend in the elbow. If not for that, if you, if you try bending the arm, obviously with the plate in place, it's going to, of course, butt up against the, the armor on the top and it's going to restrict it a little bit. He has a, a ball joint in the hand. The hands rotate very easily and back and forth. Uh, he does have an upper torso crunch camera back here upper torso crunch as well as uh, what would have been a swivel in the waist but again like this kind of this section right here limits it ever so slightly and then finally the legs have a ball joint ball joint out forward and back he has a bend at the knee and again it's kind of the same way as the elbow there's a bend at the knee but just want to make sure that the shin guard isn't isn't in the way at all it won't limit it the posability and lastly uh, he does have a ball joint which pivots at the foot and he kind of hinges up and down as well. It's a great piece. I love, love this piece. Big fan of Star Wars, obviously, The Force Awakens. I'm super excited for that. Uh, fittingly enough, had to pick up this piece uh, and uh, very, very pleased with it. Uh, now, this is the second Hero Cross figure that Spots picked up. The first one was Optimus Prime and uh, hope that this won't be the last very, very impressed. And uh, truthfully, prior to picking up both the uh, the Prime and the Stormtrooper, uh, Hero Cross was a, a company that um, I knew of, but I just didn't pick up pieces for. And having now seen them in hand, you get a good high quality, heavy piece. Again, the Stormtrooper's not as heavy as the Prime was, but he's a good quality piece. And I really, really like it. Uh, Spot's going to provide the link down below for Hero Cross, so if you guys want to check them out, maybe pick up a couple Stormtroopers for yourself. They also have the likes of Disney, they've got Marvel DC characters, and uh, they've got a lot going on. They've got a, an upcoming Batman that's going to be released as well, uh, Sorcerer Mickey from the, you know, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, that's super exciting as well. Uh, yeah, a very fantastic company Hero Cross is. 
Today's uh, collectible spot, we're having a look at the Hero Cross Hybrid Metal Figuration 005, the Stormtrooper. Stay tuned, guys. Spots can have more collectible spots heading your way. Thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time. Just one thing that Spot forgot to mention when it came to the Stormtrooper is that he came with an inclusion of stickers, the stickers that go on the base itself. I'm going to go ahead and take the display neck off, and we can go ahead and peel the main sticker off, and we want to make sure we take the little dots off too, because this section is going to fit over top of the top of the display stand. We're just going to peel these off. It was one of those things, actually, that uh, when I was putting away the Stormtrooper, I noticed there was a sticker right at the back section of the uh, of the card. And I was actually even thinking to myself, it's a shame that the display stand didn't have some notable details showing that it was, a, you know, a Star Wars piece. And sure enough, as you can see, there is the Empire sticker. And we can go ahead and peel the front sticker for it which also has HMF-005 Stormtrooper. And we can go ahead and stick that on. Stick that on to the front. There we go. Already love the Stormtrooper. That's definitely something that now improves the display stand. I just want to tack this onto the video just in case somebody didn't think that the stickers or ways to label the display stand weren't included weren't included. They were included, I just didn't see them right away. But there you go. A little tack on to the end of the video. Certainly, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.